G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to Pouring Your Heart Out. Now, did you see the video where I made this gorgeous chiffon uh, resin coaster? And I did it in my chunky live edge coaster mold. And uh, today I thought I would go again, but I'm going to use my bigger mold, my tray mold. I oh, know, it's exciting. Um, and when I did this one, I said, what colors would you like to see? And so many of you said green with like a copper or green with a gold. Um, so I'm going to do that today. Um, I'm also going to do like a burgundy at some stage, but today I'm going with the green so to begin with, what we need to do is we need to get our piece of chiffon. This is just a lightweight white chiffon that I got from Spotlight. If you're in Australia, <laughs> oh, Spotlight. Look, you can get anywhere. eBay, Amazon, if you want to do online shopping, or you can actually go down to the store and buy it. Right, so what I like to do first is just move that up a little bit. I don't want to waste it. Basically, what I'm going to do is just cut out the size of the mold that I want to use. It's no point doing a huge piece because then it all just gets too too folded. I, I like I personally like gentle folds, but I mean if you want more in there, go for it. But I don't want too many. So what I tend to do is um because this is a bigger mold, I might do, this is probably about, look, I'm just going to do it roughly now and then I'll, I'll tidy it up. It's about an inch or so, two, two centimetres, almost an inch, just around, just to give me a, a rough guide as to what size I want to do. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll fix up the edges afterwards because they're a bit, you know, pointy and jagged and, and I don't want that. So I'll just do this first um, and then I'll, I'll tidy it up. So that's what I like to do because I don't want too, too much chiffon in there. Okay, so that's it. Pop that away. And with the last one, I did the um, silver edges. I dusted them first, but I, I did find that the dust, because it's powder, it kind of floated around and it sort of got into the center. And so I'm just going to have the clear edges today. Uh, so I think that'll look really nice as well. So there we go. Move that out of the way. And you can see it kind of moves. And anyway, I'm just going to, I'm just going to trim it up and, and make it look pretty. Um, and mix up my resin. And then I'll come back to you. Right, I have got my resin. Um, I made up uh, 150 grams of A and 65 grams of B. This is the Platinum River Table resin. Um, and I did pop it in my vacuum chamber just to get all the bubbles out. <laughs> I think I've got some glitter in there. It must have been on my bench. So what I like to do, oh, and it's got, it's only got two drops, two drops of petrol resin ink in it now it's not the green green that I want obviously um, but you don't want to put too much color in your top coat um, otherwise you won't really be able to see your chiffon so that's it's a shade of the color that I want um, and then for the top for the next coat I'll make it darker now what I like to do is just grab my chiffon oh look now I've see I've shooken it to get all the Shooken it? Shaken it to get dust and stuff off it. And now I've got a frayed edge. I'll have to trim that. So what I like to do is just make sure it's going to fit and you don't have too much chiffon in there. All right. So just, this is what I like to do anyway. It's up to you whether or not you want to do it. You might discover you've got way too much. Now, it is quite high there, but when you put it in liquid, they will, they will drop. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. So if you if you think that that's too much for you, just take a little bit off all the way around. Um, I am going to just trim off my frayed areas though, um, and then uh, we'll we'll get going. So be careful when you're shaking it, like to get any dust and things off. So I just I just trimmed off my little frayed edges there. Put that to the side. Make sure you don't get any little bits of those fluff anywhere near your mold. I'm going to give this a very light shake over here just to get rid of any more fraying. 
Okay, I think we're good to go. All right, gloves back on. Something to press your chiffon around with. You don't want to be sticking your fingers in there. Alrighty, now when I pour my resin into the mould, I don't pour it straight in because it makes splashes. I like to just pour it onto a stick and as low as possible so that you're not getting that splashing and bubbles. I've just used gold glitter <laughs> in something else and I can see it's got little bits of glitter. Gosh. Might have been on this mixing stick. I don't know. Oh dear. You use glitter once and then it's forever in your pieces, isn't it? Now, a little bit of a torching here. We'll have a little bit of a glittery. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's too much. Too much to get out. It's very, very fine glitter. Look, I don't even know if you'll notice it or not. All right, so... Once you've got your, your bubbles out, now the other thing, use the very, very thinnest, lowest d viscosity resin that you've got for this technique, okay? I'm just going to place that over, like so. And you can see there's no bubbles there because it's very thin resin. It's like water. It's the chiffon's just soaking through it. And then all you need to do is carefully. There's no rush. This resin has a very, very long working time. It's a two-day cure. So there's no rush. Just carefully pull your chiffon in. If you see a bubble, then you, well, I've got a couple of little bubbles there. You can, you can take that up and then push it back down again. So just, I guess, just do one section at a time. Just take your time. There's a bubble under there as well. I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to just, I don't know if you can see it, it's under there. I'm going to lift that up and I'm going to spray some alcohol under there. I think I got it. Oh gosh, now I've picked up my frayed edges. Let me just fold those over. Okay, I've still got that bubble in there. I do want to get it out though. I think I've got it. It's another one there. This, this corner, <laughs> if a circle can have a corner, this corner's got a few bubbles. It's because I didn't put it in correctly. One section at a time. Do one section at a time. And uh, you should be okay. I just kind of chucked it all in so but I lay it out and then just sort of pull in one section at a time make sure that it's bubble free move on to the next section now because this is the live edge mold it's on a bit of an angle like that so your edges like your frayed edges are going to be on the bottom and uh, you're probably not even going to see those chase the bubbles out <laughs> It's not too bad. Like now, the first time, the first time I ever did this, my gosh, I just, I think I just used like a normal medium viscosity resin, and it was, it was a pretty much a disaster. So I've learnt from there not to use that, and you really need to use your very, very thinnest, lowest viscosity resin that you have, because you won't have the bubbles, and also you've got more work time, you know, to play around with it and get it into the shape that you want. So there's a bubble in that one there. So we'll just lift that out, lift it up, get that bubble out. So basically that is all you need to do. 
and chase that bubble out as well. Try and get all your bubbles out. I think you know you'll be happier with the end result if you can get them all out. That was a big one, and I just kind of pushed it out with the. See that one there? Can you see that there? I just push it. There it goes. You don't have to always lift them up, lift the um, fabric up. You might be able to just sort of chase it out. Now I'm just having a look to see if I've got any more, and I don't want the chiffon folded on itself too much. There's a bubble right there. Let me see if I can actually chase it out. Did it go? No, it's still in there. I'm going to just push, push it out. To the edge. There it is. It's gone. Okay, so um, that's pretty much it. I can see another one there. So I'm going to do the same with that. Um, and then I am just going to let this cure. It doesn't have to be totally totally set it just needs to be um, sort of touch dry so that you can then come along and put your next layer on and then we're going to do that nice dark emerald green if I can't get it dark enough with the ink I'll add a drop of black but we'll see how we go so basically this that's that's all you need to do I think I'm pretty much bubble free I can't oh, maybe there's one anyway I'll, I'll have another little fiddle with it make sure all my bubbles are gone and uh, make sure that I'm happy with my my folds, my shapes of my folds. It's chasing another bubble towards the edge. There we go, got him. It seems quite easy. There's one just there in the middle. It would have to be in the middle, wouldn't it? All right, um, I won't bore you anymore. I'll get another couple of little bubbles out, um, and then I'll see you for the top coat. Come down and have a little look, a closer look at what it's looking like. Mm. I don't know if you can see this there. It's a couple of little bubbles in there. I need to get those out. But apart from that, I think it's all good. All right. I will, and oh, is that a hair? something in there <laughs> I'll get that out too all right I'll see you soon after I've done making this beautiful it's the next day uh, my rivet table resin is still soft as you can see <laughs> it's bendy but it, it has set enough for me to do the top coat um, now in another video coming up real soon I'm going to show you my um, resin curing I don't know that it's a resin curing machine because nothing can make resin cure resin just cures but it speeds up the curing time so I'm going to use that um, next time I use my river table resin and I will I'll do a video on that um, now I'm going to try again with the petrol and if I need to make it darker I'll add the onyx and the onyx I've put into my little um, needle nose dropper just because I can get like a half a drop out by using that instead of a whole big drop so anyway we'll see how we go because it does kind of look a bit aquarish in there doesn't it but I'm hoping that this background will, will make it look like a, a really nice dark color one two three four five six seven eight nine ten let's just go with ten hey eh? I wanted a nice dark green well, not necessarily. Oh gosh, that's quite dark. <laughs> I didn't really want it. I didn't want it like bottle green, like green green. I like this shade of green. It's still transparent though. Let's put those blacks away. I'm just going to have a look and see what it looks like on a piece of paper towel. Yeah, that's quite it still looks more blue though and I know in the little sample that you know it, it was like a bluey green um, I'm just wondering if I put one drop of green into it if it'll change it let me just go grab my greens do you want to come with me you want to come with and we'll go and look at our greens oops get your finger out of the way woman all right here we go hello doggies hello <laughs> 
Oh, yes, I know. I know. It's because I said hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. Oh, Lola, be quiet. Be quiet. We're looking at, we're looking at ink. Hang on. We're looking at ink. Um, here's some of my inks. <laughs> um, oh, dear. You get into resin, you get into resin. So this is, this is what I did. I know it comes with the octopus fluids. It does come with little card, sample card, but I like to put down the color myself. So that's what I used there. It does look more blue on the screen. Um, Woodruff. Let's find the Woodruff. It looks like a very dark green. And then I'll just put my little card back. And um, yeah, we'll try. So these are the octopus inks. And these are the octopus alcohol inks. So... Um, yeah, let's let's try one drop of this, shall we? We'll try one drop and just see how we go with this. Walk back. Okay, so I mixed in some of the woodruff. It took me a little while actually because I'll go and drop by drop by drop to make it darker and also put in, um, so I probably put in equal amounts of woodruff and then probably about four drops of black. And I know this looks very, very dark, but it's, it's a lovely dark green, and uh, which is what I, I really wanted. Um, not, a, not a bright green, just sort of like a, I don't know, a green. I wanted that green. All right, so now we're just going to pour this over the top. And when you're doing your first layer, you just need to make sure that it's deep enough for the chiffon folds um, to sort of be able to stand up in the resin. If it's too shallow, the folds won't kind of stand up and they'll just sort of flop over and you will lose that 3D effect. So you might be able to see it from mine. Um, the folds are kind of, the tips of the folds are just sort of poking up through the resin, which is fine, the top coat is there to cover those up and also to have a darker shade to really make that chiffon stand out. So that's really, I'm happy with that. Would you call that an emerald green? Maybe that's an emerald green. Really love, love that color. All right, so basically that's all we need to do. Now, because it's the back, you can spray with some alcohol just to get rid of bubbles. Um, I did pop my resin in my airless my um, resin de bubbler little vacuum chamber that I've got um, I'm kind of using it for all pores these days especially if it's a clear like a transparent one like this you don't want to see any bubbles in there and I can't so that's it um, so now we just need to wait the top coat will be ready like in six hours or something because I used the platinum 360 plus but the river table resin which is still on the first layer um, it's not going to be ready to unmold until tomorrow so I do need to wait a bit longer all right that's it I will see you guys tomorrow for the unmolding okay so it is finally set it's been two days and um, let's get her out let's get it out super keen to see what it looks like I love 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 this dark emerald green that I've used excuse the ring light it'll go in a minute <laughs> okay Ooh, it's nerve-wracking oh I will link the um the tray mold the live edge tray mold in the description down below if you want to grab one of those for yourself okay are we ready <gasps> oh I hope it's pretty I hope it's pretty here we go Oh, yes, look at that. Wow. My gosh, it does. They always look better when you sort of put them on a background rather than have it so transparent. <gasps> look at it. A little bit of glitter everywhere. Oh, my gosh, that's so pretty. Love it. 
you can see how you get that really dark background it doesn't look green because it's got the you know the chiffon and and the lighter green on the top coat but it gives that hint of dark green so love it love my folds wow i'll try and get some nicer shots for you it's really difficult with all these ring lights around but because you've used like a transparent um, color you can see you know the crystals on the edges there oh, I'm so happy with that right, pick it up and then I'll show you what it looks like sort of with the you can see the light behind it I have actually still got a couple of bubbles in there which I didn't see but <laughs> that must have been stuck in the the folds of the chiffon on this side so what I thought I would do with this piece is something a little bit more different and something that can be usable. So what I got was I bought this, I don't know if you can see the whole thing, <laughs> there we go. I bought this paper towel holder uh, just on Amazon. It's, as you can see, it's just black. Um, and I'm just going to, I've taken this off, just unscrew it my finger there on that screw there <laughs> like so I'll pop that out you don't really need this piece <clears throat> maybe at some stage I can actually pour resin on it or something I'm, I'm not sure it's got like a spongy rubber backing on it um, and I mean you could if you wanted to do that with it but it's not going to sit flat so anyway that, that'll go aside for another another project um you may be able to just buy i don't know if you can just buy like these two pieces not sure but um what my husband did he went up to the man shed and he put a hole in that and he kind, he kind of made the hole a little bit bigger so that that screw now sits flush like that okay and then whoops if you don't drop it hold it in place and then with the screw end just screw that together like so until it's tight and there we go look <laughs> now I have my own paper towel holder <laughs> and uh, look it's a pretty basic idea but if you want to display your art um, or if you want, you know, sell it in the markets or something. It's just, I think, a more beautiful way of having a paper towel holder. Look at that. And you can proudly display that on your kitchen bench. Um, if you wanted to, you could put, you know, loo paper on it <laughs> instead. Um, whatever you like. So, yeah, there we go. It's just a little something different. And because I'm going to use this one as a paper towel holder, I'm not going to put any copper or anything around the edge I, I don't think it needs it I think it's just as it is it's just a paper towel holder and a beautiful one at that and that's all it needs to be so there you go a little bit of inspiration for you if you would like to make something for around the house um, any tray will do but this one it's a nice thick chunky base so it does lend itself really nicely to something like this that's not going to wobble over and uh, you could put some little silicone feet on it if you want you could um, attach a piece of cork or felt or something on it if you wanted to but there we go that's that's my take on it <laughs> on something that I've done with this particular piece what do you think let me know what you think of it down in the comments and um yep yeah, <laughs> I do like it I really love it I'm gonna pop it in my kitchen right now all right thank you so much for watching and uh, I'll see you all again real soon for the next video okay take care guys Bye for now.